In this video, I'm going to go over how to make fumed marbles. And in fact, this one is the one that gets made in the video. And it's a very sort of reflective fume twist marble. Very simple. But I hope that you'll be able to get the basics of fuming and at least some tips and tricks for that from this video. And then you can figure out how to do these kind of marbles on your own. It's basically the same procedure. It's just a different way of encasing the fume and twisting up the marble. So once you master this kind of simple fuming, and this one isn't great, I rushed it for the video. But once you master this, you should be able to figure out how to do these other kind of fume marbles. And then you can expand on it with different kinds of backings. You know, it doesn't have to be simple backings like this. A lot of people do dot stacks and stuff. I do that as well. But, yeah, you can create a really pretty marble with just that fume and a simple cobalt blue backing in this case. I like to use a 7mm rod to hold my fuming metals on. And it needs to be kind of short because you got to hold it up underneath the torch. And I also like to put a little tape on the end so that I don't accidentally pick it up and try to use it as a punty rod. You can see on my marver there I've got a little piece of silver. And then I've also got a little piece of gold wire that you can barely see. I've got a lot more silver than I have gold. But I just put it on my marver like that. And I don't worry about warming it up or anything before I attach it to the fuming rod. Alright, so I'll light up my flame and I'll get the rod into the flame and just warm up the end until it's pretty hot. Not so that it's soupy, but almost to that point. And then I want to touch it down onto the piece of metal really quickly and then kind of hold it there. And I come in at like a 45 degree angle for that. Now usually, for me, it'll stick on the first time. But you may have to do that more than once in order to get the piece to stick. And then once it sticks, I come up and I melt it again in the flame just a little bit to make sure that the metal is completely melted into the rod. And that's what it looks like when it's attached to the bottom of the rod there. So the silver one's ready. And now I'm going to do the gold one. It's the same deal. Just heat up the end until it's good and molten. And then touch it down onto the piece of gold at about a 45 degree angle. Hold it there for a second. And it should pick up. Then I melt that piece of gold until it's a little ball. And that's all you have to do to prepare fuming rods. And you'll get quite a few marbles out of that piece of silver less out of the gold but still quite a few. To do this marble you need some basic supplies. You need two larger rods. These are 12 millimeters of clear glass. You need some rods for punties. Some color for your backing. I used the cobalt blue in this case. And then your fuming sticks from before. And I usually like to have a couple of backup fuming sticks in case the piece of metal falls off and I have to start over. I sped up this first part here because I'm just making a gather with the 12 millimeter rod and you want this to be half the size of your finished marble. So just gather up enough glass and then I'm going to press it out into a Maria shape on the marber. And it doesn't have to be perfectly centered for this marble like it would be for an implosion or something, but you want it to be close. Just 
just removing the chill marks and then I'm going to go straight into fuming this Maria. So I'm turning my flame down and I'm going to start with silver. So I start with just a little reducing flame and it needs to be a very soft flame. So then I start bringing the silver rod into the flame and I bring it in carefully because it can crack on you if you're heating it up too fast. But then I bring it right down in front of the cones and you can kind of see the silver start to fly off of there onto that Maria. And I like to wiggle it back and forth in the cones just a little bit. And that's it. Silver fumes pretty easily, so I just do one layer. And you can see I got a pretty good yellow sheen on there from the silver. So that's good enough. And now I'm going to add a little bit of oxygen to my flame so that I can do the gold. But it's still a pretty soft flame with not a lot of pressure behind it. Again, warming up the rod carefully and then bringing it down in front of the cones and holding my Maria out in front there. And you can see the gold fume go onto the piece. And my piece of gold is pretty small and gold does not fume like as well as silver. So I'm going to do a couple of layers. Just letting it cool down in between a little bit. And then coming in with more gold. Putting it right in front of the cones there. And you can see how I'm holding it up from underneath the torch. That's so I don't accidentally bump the hot part of the rod into my torch face. So if you come in from behind like that, it's impossible to bump into your torch face with the hot blob of silver and glass. So I have a nice couple of layers of silver and gold on there now. And now I want to do something to preserve and protect that fume. You can do lines of clear, you can do other colors. There are a lot of options here. But for this marble I'm just going to do another big gather plunged directly onto the top of that Maria. So all I'm doing here is using my big flame to quickly gather up a nice hot gather of this 12 millimeter clear rod. Oh, and I'm keeping the other piece of glass warm in the flame a little bit because it will crack on you if you let it cool down too much. But just making that gather as, as quickly as I can here. And I'm keeping it nice and hot and juicy when I plop it onto the other piece. So that I can sort of move it around and center and mush it on my marble a little bit. And I want it to be the same size and relatively lined up with that other piece. So 
So then I'm going to go down to a smaller flame. But I still need a lot of heat, so I got a lot of fuel running here. And I'm just going to come in, and what I'm doing here is sort of melting in that cleavage line between these two pieces. I want those to flow until they tack together. And you can really see it. It's hard to see on the video, but when you look at the piece in the flame, you'll be able to see when the two sides tack together. So wait for that to happen in one spot, and then just continue on around, sort of superheating that space in between until it starts to tack together. And I didn't speed this part up because I wanted you to see just how quickly this can happen. Doesn't take a lot of time, but you need to get the glass really hot. And not so hot that you boil it and burn it and stuff, but get it really hot. And those two sides will tack together. And then also what's happening here is I'm also burning the fume off in the spaces where it's not protected by glass. So all that fume that was on the outside of the Maria and down on the rod and everything is getting burned off. And that's how you create the contrast between your fumed areas and your non-fumed areas. There's got to be a step in there where you go in and clean off the fume that you don't want. So I do both things at the same time and melt my gather together and clean off the fume. Then I'm going to go in and flame cut off the big rod from one side. And I want to do this quickly and keep it pretty hot because I'm just going to attach it right back onto the side and line it up with that fume line. So I want a good attachment there and then I'm going to immediately go to the other rod and flame cut it off and do the same thing. And when you pull this off, try not to leave a whole lot of glass behind. But there's always going to be like a little nipple there. So the last part was about cleavage. This is about nipples here. So you got to melt those in. And so that's what I'm doing here now. It's just superheating those nipples so that they melt in. And I want those melted in so that there's no lines between them and the gather. And then, I'm also going to go in and heat up the gather itself. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time rounding it out on my marber. Because I'm going to twist this up. And I don't want there to be any lines or rough angles on the gather when I twist it up because that can cause bubbles and a ropey effect and other issues when you twist it up. So I'm heating it up and then I'm rolling it on my marber and I'm sorry but I got that out of the frame a little bit but I'm just simply rolling on my marber to get rid of any angles or edges and make this round.
So when that's ready, and it's not perfectly round, it just doesn't have any angles on it. But when that's ready, I go in and I basically just heat the gather in the middle and I do a sort of random twist. This is not a real careful twist here. I just want it to be sort of an organic flowing twist. So I twist that up until it's about as tight as I want it. And I'm also sort of shaping this mass into more of a spherical shape at this point. So stretch it or push it gently if you need to change the shape. So then I'm just flame cutting off one of my handles and I just sort of pick whichever one looks like wants to go. And then I'm going to create a little bit nicer termination by pulling off some glass here with my tweezers. And I'm not going to use a glass rod to tear off bits and create a really nice termination here because it's for the video, but you could do that. So get my marble mold ready because I'm going to try to round this out a little bit, although not completely at this point. And I have my mic close marble mold off to the side, so I'm using that to do the sort of big shaping steps. It works really well for that. You can sort of force a marble into a better shape with the mic close mold. And so to save time for the video, that's what I've done here. So just smoothing out the marble using the mic close mold. I'm sorry I had that out of the frame. But using that just to smooth out the surface imperfections so that I have a nice round marble. Mostly. So now I'm going to warm up a punny. Clean up the end a little bit. I don't know why I grabbed that rod. It's a little dirty on the end and I, I guess I didn't notice that. But clean up the end in the flame a little bit and go ahead and use it. That's a really solid cold seal there where I pushed a lot of glass into the surface while I was centering it up. Then I'm going to cut off the other rod. So then I'm flame cutting off the big rod and I'm going to make another slightly messy termination on this end as well. And as the other end of the marble starts to cool down there, you can really see the gold and silver shiny effect in the marble already. But just smoothing out this side here. Again, using the my close mold to make it a little more round. So 
Then I'm just going to tap off this punty. And I'm going to change axis here because I want to add a backing, but I want it sideways. So I find a spot where the fuming looks good, and I put that upwards. I'm going to attach my punty onto what I want to be the front of the marble, if you will. So I put the front of the marble up, prepare my punty for a cold seal. And then I'm going to tack on to the top of that marble. And just lift it out of the marble mold. And there we go. So now just making sure that this marble is smoothed out and especially the recent punty mark. And again, using the mic close mold to smooth out the marble a little bit. Centering my punty, I think, there. And then I am going to use the cobalt blue to just add a little backing to this marble. Fume sometimes looks better with a backing. Usually a dark backing works really well for fumed marbles. So I grabbed this cobalt blue and this is a This is a second quality cobalt blue rod from Glass Alchemy, I believe. It's a nice pretty blue. So just painting on a circular backing here. And then I'll show you my little trick for straightening out the edge where the two pieces come together. I just superheat that and then I stick a little piece of glass in and pull upward and out a little bit. And that will sort of get rid of that little V shape where the two pieces came together as you went around. And then melting this in and smoothing out the marble will even out the rest of it as well. So I sped this part up and I cut some out because for some reason I spent a lot of time trying to get a bubble out of the blue and I don't know why I was doing that. This was just for the video and the rest of the marble I didn't spend a lot of time on but for some reason that bubble was really bothering me so. So continuing on with the final shaping here And I want to get this end completed and perfect before I transfer the punty because I want the punty that's on the bottom 
that's coming up here to be the last one. So spending a lot of time evening out a little flat spot that was on the side of this marble that was caused by me trying to get that bubble out. So there we go, that looks a lot better. So I'm going to let that end cool down a little bit before I put the marble into the marble mold for the transfer. And then I'm using my little knife blade to chill the edge there before I tap that punty off. Then I just go around to the other side. I face the back side of the marble up. That's the side that I just finished. I'm going to try to make a really light cold seal with this last punty here. But it needs to hold the marble, so as your marbles get bigger, you have to go a little bit less light. But I just touch it down a little bit and then pull up, turn the marble a little bit to see if it's centered, then I come up into the flame again. So then I come back into the flame and I want to finish shaping this end of the marble and make sure that I get rid of that punty mark from the last punty. This is going to be the top of the marble so I want it to look really nice. Now normally I would go in here and probably skin the face of this marble just so that I have a nice clear lens on the front but again not really doing that kind of stuff for the video just trying to finish it up as quickly as I can here
Uh, so I'm waiting for the marble to cool down just a little bit before I come in and tap it off. And then I'm going to rearrange the punty mark so that I can reach it when I come back around with my marble mold on the other side. So think about that and then point your torch down so that you can smooth out that final punty mark there. Getting the whole area around it nice and hot so that it's smoothed out together. But you want to be careful not to get it too hot or you will flatten your marble a little bit. So there we go, that's it. I use my marble mold to transfer these into the kiln. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I have some Kevlar tongs as well, which sometimes I use for bigger marbles. But that's what the marble looks like there. And as you can see, it's got that nice reflective fume in it. You can see it from every angle, but it looks best when it's in front of the blue backing, I think. That's all there is to it.